Hey everyone, it's Sam here again. Thanks for checking out my channel. I think I'm going to give vlogging a go or maybe like combine vlogging with unhauls because I don't buy enough books in order to have like unhaul videos that are long enough really. So I think this would be a kind of a cool way to combine it. And I had a couple people say, I really like vlogging, try vlogging, I read, I watch Haley and Bookland's vlogs all the time, so I think I'm going to give it a go. I didn't, wasn't totally sure if I was going to have the time, and uh, I went to, I finished filming yesterday and editing and posted the video, and watched some Food Channel Network because, shh, because, I mean, it's the Food Channel Network, and went to bed early, got into night's sleep, and I woke up this morning for work and just felt like I got hit by a freight train. There has been, like, a flu going around my office, and I thought I dodged it, but I thought I just had the sniffles, but I guess not. <laughs> so I figured, you know, I'm home, I'm trying some coffee, and I'm kind of frustrated because it doesn't taste the way it's supposed to. Um, so... I think I'm going to give it a go. I don't know that I'll have enough content at the end of the week to actually post this, but I'll give it a, a try. So last night, after finishing everything, I finished reading The Falconer by Elizabeth May. I ended up giving it a 3.75 out of 5. You can check out my full review on, review on Goodreads. I liked it at the beginning, but it kind of morphed like midway in the end and like it wasn't exactly what I was expecting and that's in a both a good and a bad way and things were just kind of underdeveloped I think and I think I'll pick up the sequel I just don't know when and I think I'd pick it up off book outlet or borrow it from the library rather than buying it I got one more chapter in on Even the Darkest Stars. I was debating just trying to start reading this today while I'm homesick, but honestly, just the size of it is making me feel exhausted. And I think I'll try and read another chapter or two today. So Peru's Project mentioned this book in one of her unhauls recently. So I saw it and I was like, maybe? Called Clicked by uh, Tamara Ireland Stone. And books with girls with coding and technology is like how we're going to get people into girls into that area and they're like really good paying jobs and all that kind of stuff so I'm really excited to read that it's not too too long and I know there's like pictures in it and that kind of stuff so I think I'll be able to read it today and then I'm kind of debating on starting another audiobook I think I'm looking at Walk on the Earth I think it's called by Ray Carson my friend Meg again I read it I heard mixed things all over the place and my friend Meg read it and was like you would definitely like this I'm gonna give it a go um, oh, and I realized after watching my videos that I never introduced you to, like, my roommates, like, the people I live with. Well, not the people. The things that I live with. So I have two dogs. This is Sherlock. Hmm? Sherlock is uh, almost five, four and a half, so he's a Shih Tzu Poodle. I got him in Ontario. And then when he was about three or so, when I was living in Nova Scotia, going to school, I felt really bad, like, having to leave, like, for long days, like, to go to school, like, classes or a couple hours, then have a shift at work and then another class and then go home. So I didn't want him to be alone. And then one of my coworkers at the job I was working with told me that her dog was pregnant. And so I ended up getting another doggy. He Say Hi. So that is Watson. Yeah, so I have two, two dogs. You may hear them. Sherlock's pretty quiet. Watson likes to make noise. So if you hear yelping or crying in the vlogs, that is him. And um, yeah. Hey, everyone. Just a bit of like a Tuesday check-in. Still not feeling the greatest, so I'm home again. But um, I'm feeling a lot better than it was yesterday, so hopefully I'll be back to normal tomorrow. I got a little bit of like a delivery yesterday, but it was so late in the day just because of the lighting. I didn't like how it came when I filmed it, so I'll just do it now. But I'm almost done. I just started it a couple hours ago, The Dollmaker of Krakow. It is easily one of the best books I've read in 2017. I'm going to be returning my copy to the library and definitely going to buy one of my own. Um, it's just a fantastic book, and there's gorgeous illustrations in it. It's five out of five stars for me right now. I'm on the last like quarter of the book, and it's just an amazing, amazing book. And so, so important. So if you have kids and are trying to teach them about the topic of the Holocaust and such, I think it's a very easily digestible one, to, like even with the content. Yesterday, my goal was to get to 150 pages in Even the Darkest Stars. And I did it last night. I got to, I think, let me check here. I got to chapter 11, so page 168. And I just put it down because I was so exhausted. 
So I'm definitely going to try and get to page 200 tonight, if not um, 250. We'll see. But it's, so far it's really, really good and um, really liking the characters. There's a lot of like, the main character is just such a hot mess and it's in such like an adorable way. I got, like I mentioned, an or a delivery yesterday and from Indigo. So they had like a coupon that went out of if you spend $50 or more, you get 10 times the plum points, which are the rewards points for Indigo in Canada. So I picked up The Dire King by William Ritter. This is the fourth book in the Jacobi series. I finished the third book, Ghostly Echoes, two weeks ago or so, and I absolutely loved this series. I'm in love with this series. I'm really sad it's ending. I thought it was going to be a longer one, but... I finished Ghostly Echoes and just I need to know what's going to happen. The series has just gotten better and better with each book. So I would absolutely recommend picking it up if you haven't. It's like a historical fiction paranormal e, But there's like a really strong, at least two really strong female characters. I also picked up The Glass Spare by Lauren DeStefano. I I know this is going to be in a book box that I normally get. I am going to be skipping a couple book boxes, though, just because uh, it's closer to Christmas and saving up for the holidays and trying to invest in a couple things that I hope will go on sale. So I'm really excited about this book. The cover is beautiful. I am probably going to get to this one in December. I see my picking myself picking up The Dire King much more closer than this one. I'm excited for this one, but I'm on this historical fiction binge right now as you can kind of tell with what I've been reading. So, yeah. And then the last book I picked up to get myself over the $50 mark was The Dark Intercept by Julia Keller. I hadn't heard anything about this book, and I'm kind of surprised because the cover is gorgeous. And then I read the synopsis, and if I remember it correctly, it was something along the lines of, like, people have given up basic human rights for their safety, which is, like, a topic we discuss off and on in a lot of our society. So... I am going to try and pick this up by the end of November. If not, I will definitely be reading it in December. So I will definitely keep you up to date on that. Oh, I also forgot to mention, I'm making some good progress on Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. I am like two thirds of the way through on the audiobook, so I'll be finishing it definitely this afternoon. Um, and then I'm going to try and read, uh, I think it's called Alana by Tamara Pierce. I don't understand how I'd never heard of this author when I was growing up. And she had a new cover that I saw and was like, I need to try this author out and figure out. And then it's like a whole series thing. So I'm going to have to read like the whole series and catch up. But the new cover is gorgeous. I think it's like The Temptist and something else. I saw the cover and was like, I need to have that. Last week, I also got gifted some books by a coworker who was gifted the books by another coworker, but then she realized she already had them. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I've never actually, I don't remember reading anything by her. So it's the Darkest Powers trilogy by Kelly Armstrong. She's a Canadian author, and I, I can, I kind of complain that there's like very few YA big Canadian authors. And then I've like never actually read one of the few ones. So I think I'm going to try at least to read The Summoning by the end of the year and see if I like it or not. I was also gifted The Awakening and The Reckoning. And then there's The Gathering. I think it's a different trilogy because those are three books and it says it's a trilogy. So, But the title sounds like it's still part of the same thing. So maybe it's like a Shadowhunter Chronicles kind of situation. Either way, um, that is that. That is my Tuesday. I will see you guys on Wednesday. I hope I'll be looking a little bit better and feeling back to normal. And yeah. Hey everyone, just doing a bit of a Wednesday check-in. I am honestly quite frustrated right now with Amazon and UPS. My pre-order copy of Renegades, which came out yesterday, is still not here. It arrived in my city's depot on Monday and went out for delivery, and then got changed to delayed delivery for a day, and then it went out for delivery yesterday at 6 a.m., and never showed up, and then I went out for delivery again today, and it still has not shown up, and it's close to dinner time, so I don't know exactly what, what the heck is going on, but I think I'm going to have to start calling some customer service people and finding out what's going on with my book, which I really, really want to get my hands on. I also got about two and a half hours in to the audiobook for Radium Girls. It's really, really interesting so far. I didn't realize exactly what it was going to encompass. Just like, I, I knew a general concept of the topic, but I always assumed that we were like, when we found out that Radium was bad for you, to be like, oh my God, stop using it. 
but that's definitely not what happened. And I was also horrified to find out exactly everything that it was used in. Like, they were using the byproducts of the radium to, like, in children's sandboxes. And just, like, the weird... I, I, I just didn't realize, too, that it was basically set up like the cigarette industry before the cigarette industry and, like, hiding all of the health problems that it resulted in and all of that chaos. So, so far I'm in... I'm really enjoying it. The writing is really, really interesting because it comes off like a fiction book despite being a nonfiction. So at this point, I would definitely recommend giving it a read. It's really, really interesting uh, nonfiction. I am also 261 pages into Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. My goal is to get to page 200 yesterday and then stuff started happening and so I'm at page 261 now and I had to make myself put the bookmark in or I knew I wasn't getting any sleep so I'm probably gonna finish it by the end of today there's about this much left uh, so I think there's like a little 120 pages or so so it's really really good so far I'm loving the characters the main character is like she's such a hot mess at the beginning and she never really grows out of that it just kind of shows that she has other skills that people ignored and I have some really interesting, like, intrigued... I'm really intrigued by some of these characters to see exactly where they're going or, like, where they've been in kind of situation. And, like, the mythology and, like, magic and, like, the witch thing, whole thing going on here. It's been really, really interesting. So I'm excited to, to finish this off so far. It's like a four and a half, if not five stars for me, for sure. I also went to the library this afternoon and picked up one of my interlibrary loans, Timekeeper, by... Tara or Tara Sim. I, just the cover is gorgeous, but I heard, I remember, I honestly don't even remember what it was, but the, I remember reading the summary and being like, oh, that sounds like something I definitely like. And I'm like a sucker for time travel, so this for sure. And I know that there's a sequel that is about to come out or has come out, so if I like it, then I think I have something to follow up on. And like, it looks very steampunky even in here, so I'm really excited for that. I also made it to the bookstore this afternoon. I had a, a, a not great mental health day, so I went to try and detach, and the thing that I love, the, my way of detaching in a, is books, so I went to the bookstore. I originally went with several books of mine that I really wanted to get, and because my bookstore is my bookstore, they had none of them in stock. They have no books by Tamora Pierce in stock whatsoever. They didn't have The Librarian of Auschwitz, which was really disappointed in because I really, really wanted that. They didn't have any of the YA books that I wanted. So instead, I ended up picking up The Riddle by Alison Krogan. Krogan? Uh, it's the second book in the Book of Pelin... Pelinor series. The first book, The Naming, I read about a month ago and actually really, really enjoyed it. I know, like, I just read it so fast and enjoyed it so much. It was just a really big zone out fantasy book, but it's definitely a high fantasy and there's so much time and effort that she put into crafting this world that I know a lot of it went right over my head and I missed it. So I'm definitely going to have to reread The Naming and then pick this one up to, I think, really fully appreciate it. I love that the new covers they've done, it's an older book series, like at least 10 years old or so, and I've seen the older covers and they're horrible, so I'm really, really happy with the new covers. They're pretty consistent in the theming. You can see the other ones in the back here. Because they're in paperback, they're actually not too bad price and YA, so I'm definitely going to try and pick up the sequels, The Crow, The Singing, and then there's one called The Bone Queen, but I don't know if it's actually like a direct series or if it's like a spinoff or a novella or something like that I have to figure that out but so far I really really enjoyed the first one and if you like high fantasies I would definitely recommend giving these ones a go I also like because I was at the bookstore and they didn't have any of the books that I wanted I ended up like breaking and I picked up my physical copy of the wizards of once by Cressida Cowell I don't think I said that right but a I got it because I was like oh there's exclusive content and I said, like, I really was debating it because I, I'm just, like, uh, scared that I won't like the story. But look at the cover. And the freaking pages are orange. And, and, like, the end page, like, this is gorgeous, too. But then I took the dust jacket off and was like, mm, I gotta get it. This is the front. And then it's got, like, the spine there and the back. And then the actual dust jacket is, like, a velvety feel. So... Honestly, even if I don't like it, I'm like super excited to keep this on my bookshelf. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeously designed book. Look at that. 
And the last book that I picked up, which I don't feel too bad about because I was going to pick it up anyways, is The Dollmaker of Krakow. This book actually made me cry. This is the third book that I've ever read that made me cry. The first one was Sarah's Key. The second one was The Book Thief. And now this one. They all do talk about the same topic of World War II. This book, uh, if it's definitely at my at this point it's my be the best book i've read in 2017 which i've read i think 214 books now and it's i just my only complaint is i wish there were more illustrations in it because the ones that there are in there are gorgeous let me see if i can find one. Oh, there we go and i think it does a really excellent job of not sugarcoating a topic but also it's not going to like scar your children reading about this I mean and even and I mean like just the topic alone but Auschwitz is included in this so I would absolutely absolutely I don't care how old you are recommend picking this book up for sure and the cover is also beautiful and the spine is also actually really pretty too it looks very like fairy tale -y. and it does have that feel the writing is again despite the topic as well as one of the characters like being a doll that talks it does have a very like kind of fairy tale feel, which I think makes it a little bit more digestible. So you can be like, oh, this wasn't actually like history at that age, but they can remember later on that this was actually history. So that is my Wednesday. But yeah. Hey everyone, I am just checking in. It is Thursday. I just got back from work. Actually had a really fantastic day. I'm feeling way better physically than I was on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and way better mentally than I was on Wednesday. So actually overall yeah it was a pretty good day and i'll kind of point out too with my books why first off i am about halfway through a little over halfway through of the radium girls i'm at the point so far it's the first like trial i don't know if there's more than one but so far i'm past the point of being like horrified and just being angry and yeah i'm really angry at a lot of these people and i feel horrible for some of these women the pain they like ha like i don't understand how nothing happens and people like were losing their jaws like ugh. anyways um so so far i'm really enjoying it i'm gonna have to look at more nonfiction, i think because like this has gotten me back on this nonfiction feel and try and find more books by this author or more books with similar uh, writing styles because I really like how it's written like a fiction and like there's nothing like super hypey or like crazy adventures happening but like it's just generally super interesting. I also last night finished Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. It was so good. I gave it a five out of five stars. It's it's one of my favorite books of the year I think but yeah I really want a fox now because of this book and if you've read it there's a like a pet fox I think his name's like ragtooth or rag to something like that and like I really want a pet fox now I don't think my dogs would be too crazy about that concept but I really want one so yeah it's like an adventure quest with climbing Mount Everest and witches and family drama and kind of romance and there's like so much grayness like I don't like some of the people that are like good and I really like some of the people that are bad but I don't like them for being bad I just like their character and like I just really kind of want the character to go like bad or like to the gray side and if you're doing NaNoWriMo now or gonna do it in the future definitely write a book oh this is I find this infuriating where like characters like straddle that gray side but like write a Darth Vader where they go bad like I want that. I wish Leigh Bardugo would have given us like a alternate ending or something. Like I'm a minority because I don't hate Mal in the books and I'm like okay with how it ended, but I like would at the bare minimum be interested to read a book where like everything goes to like hell in a handbasket in the end of the book. I'd be so interested to see like a dark twist on that ending. So if Leigh Bardugo you're watching, which I highly doubt, get on it. Next, I am planning on picking up Before She Ignites by Jodi Meadows later on tonight. I'm going to read more of the Radium Girls, I think, for a little while. It's just at a really interesting part. And then I'm going to pick this up. I was going to grab Library of Fates next, but this is just speaking to me and a bunch of people like said, read this one. So I'm going to read this one. And then I'm going to get to the Library of Fates this weekend, I think. Um, I also managed to get the audiobook for the afterlife of Holly Chase, so I'm going to follow along with the audiobook with my physical copy this weekend, I think, after I'm done the Radium Girls, so that should be good. And one of the reasons I'm so happy, uh, I mean, like, I'm kind of frustrated, but I'm actually happy, my copy of Renegades finally showed up. 
it literally spent more time at the depot going out for delivery and then never showing up than it did tra traveling from Ontario to Alberta. So like it left, yeah, it left Ontario, central Ontario on Friday night at like midnight or something like that. It got to my town's like depot, like scanned in on Monday morning. And then it went out for delivery and then got delayed delivery on Monday, out for delivery, never delivered on Tuesday, out for delivery, never got delivered on Wednesday, out for delivery and finally got delivered Thursday today. And not even in the morning, it was in the afternoon. So I don't know what's going on there. And it's not even the holiday season. We we don't have like Thanksgiving thing or anything here in Canada. We already had Thanksgiving. So I don't know what's going on. I'm kind of horrified now and scared to like order anything with the holidays coming up. But either way. I also decided, like, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I'm going to, like, break my rule. I wasn't going to get any box in December, but Shelf Love Crate announced their theme, and I think it's, like, timeless or something, and I know what the book is, and I don't have it pre-ordered yet, but I really want it, and as we've discussed, I'm a total sucker for time travelers, so I'm definitely getting the Shelf Love Crate in December box. If you don't know what they are, they're a Fantasy YA monthly subscription book box. I'll link them down below. They have two other book boxes now, too, so I haven't tried those, but I've been, for the most part, like, really happy with Shelf Love Crate. And then, like, the last really cool thing was, naturally, because I went shopping at Indigo yesterday, they, this morning, started a 10 times the Plum Points event. I originally wasn't going to super get anything, and then, like, I stumbled upon the website by accident. No, I full on just it's like a caffeine problem i have an indigo book buying problem yeah so i stumbled on their website after my friend told me that they're having a plum point event actually i'm gonna blame her it's melanie's fault for enabling me because she told me about the points event because i wouldn't have known about it if she hadn't said anything so i picked up a couple books there and one of the books that i really wanted i found out they're out of stock online they're out of stock in store, and then Amazon is out of stock of it. So I ended up having to buy a copy of the book from Book Depository, meaning it's not going to get here for like another month now, but I'm just really excited that I got it, so hopefully it'll be here by Christmas. And despite the topic I know it covers, I don't know why, but I just really feel the urge to read it this Christmas. I, I don't know why, I think that says more about me than anything else, but... I got that and I got a couple other surprises and they're hopefully going to be here by November 20th, I think it was. So I'll definitely unbox that in my vlog. And yeah, that's my Thursday. Hey everyone, I am just checking in. It's Friday and the last day of this vlog. And then I'm going to start fresh on Saturday and Sunday with the next vlog, which will go up next Saturday. Yesterday, like my goal for the end of the day was to try and finish Radium Girls and try and get to about page 50, I think it was, of Before She Ignites. I ended up not touching Before She Ignites just yet. I am going to start it tonight because it is the start of the weekend and I have a long weekend. I ended up just powering through the last little bit of Radium Girls on finishing it and it's heartbreaking and I would absolutely recommend it whether you're a fan of fiction or nonfiction in general. It's It was really an eye-opening book and it was written really beautifully and I'm going to have to look more into that author for sure, but I would definitely recommend it if you're interested in it. And I mean, it made me kind of angry, but I still give it a five out of five stars. It's definitely the best nonfiction book I've read in quite a few years. This morning while getting ready for work, I picked up the audiobook for The Afterlife of Holly Chase. I'm so excited for this book because the author, Cynthia Hand, she was one of the three authors who wrote, along with um, Before She Ignites, which is Jodie Meadows, both of them were authors for My Lady Jane. And I absolutely loved that book. If you want to know more about it, I'll link my first video in the description box where it is one of the books I read more than once this year. So, so far all I know is like, I'm only a, like a couple chapters in, there's a main character and it's supposed to be kind of a loose Scrooge retelling and she ends up not, I think the summary is, is like she ends up not like going good and ends up like dying, the main character, and then it's like she becomes a ghost or something like that. That's kind of all I knew and that's kind of all I wanted to go in with just because yeah, I know I'm gonna like it. And this cover, it's kind of, it doesn't show up great on video, but it's actually really gorgeous, and the spine is beautiful, and it's a very holiday e read, and I'm reading it for the Fish Out of Water challenge that's going on in the Life and Lit group this month. I'm not normally someone who reads anything holiday for whatever holiday it is, whether that's like Christmas or Hanukkah or, uh, I'm like totally blanking on other holidays, Halloween, which just happened, Thanksgiving, all that stuff. 
This is just kind of like a breath of fresh air for me, and I'm liking it so far. So this week, I read a total of three physical books and four audiobooks, I believe. So audiobook-wise, I gave Radium Girls five out of five stars. I gave The Falconer by Elizabeth May, which I followed along with, a 3.75 out of five stars. I gave Alana by Tamora Pierce, I believe, a four out of five stars. And the last book I read was Walk on Earth, A Stranger by Ray Carson. Sorry, the last audiobook. I think I ended up giving it a three and a half or four stars. It was all right. I really struggled with the writing of that book. Just in general, I feel like the author really struggles with writing dialogue, and that was something that really came through in the middle chunk of the book. I think I'm going to get the second one a go because, like, the characters were interesting and the premise was interesting. I just don't know. I think I'm going to have to be in one of those moods where I just not, I don't care what I read. I just want to read. I also read The Dollmaker of Krakow by R.M. Romero. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars, and at this point in the year, it is mid-November almost, it is my favorite book of the year. I also read Clicked by Tamara Ireland Stone. This was a really cool book. It has a girl entering an app competition to try and get funding and support, and something goes very wrong in the beta testing of her app before the competition. So it's her kind of trying to fix it and the spread of of like the popularity in it. It was really cool. I gave it a four out of five stars. I want to see more of these kinds of books, especially with female characters and characters of minority. Uh, it's a really good kids book for sure. And the last one that I read, I think, I can't remember any other ones, Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. I gave this one five out of five stars as well. It's definitely one of my favorite fantasies of the year. I want a pet fox now. I am really intrigued by this story. I'm really curious to see how the sequel is going to go because it's only supposed to be a duology, but I feel like there's a lot of stuff that needs to be covered or is like kind of open-ended right now. So I'm a little nervous as to how that's going to be dealt with. So just kind of a wrap up. I had a really good reading week, actually. I'm thinking of having like a vlog and a haul video each week and then having kind of like a weekly wrap-up review because I read too many books in a week to do one at the end of the month. I just wouldn't have enough time to touch on all of them and I think doing it like a weekly way it gives me like two or three minutes to just kind of go over each book. I'm not like a meticulous like flagger of a lot of books for the most part and I just kind of want to give a general like what I rated it and what my overall thoughts on it were. So let me know what you think. I think that's what I'm going to go with next week which would actually mean three videos a week. So we'll see. I think that's something I could reasonably do. I have settled on the schedule that I think I can realistically do when it comes to uploading videos. Definitely make sure to subscribe and turn on the little bell below so you get notifications. But either way, I am looking at Tuesday trying to put my fun list video, tag video, whatever it is, on Tuesdays there. And then on Fridays or Saturdays, I want to post my vlog for the week. And then on Sunday, I believe I'm going to be posting my overall reviews of the books that I've read in that time span to kind of coordinate with the vlog. And now I got to go Wonder Woman up because I have a consultation at the gym. And if you had a good reading week, let me know in the comment section below, especially if you had a book you want to recommend. And have a great week. Can you say bye? Do you want to like piece out the vlog for me? Say bye.